very much. It's a sign of a very giving Central Coast community, the annual Children's Miracle Network Telethon. We'll take you behind the scenes of this year's telethon as it raises money for community programs such as Rancho Cielo, where at-risk teens get a second chance. I never thought I could pass California High School. I could just I did it. I aced it. An asthma camp that teaches young children how to live with their asthma. We'll also take you to this year's Radiothon, where Children's Miracle Network takes to the radio waves. These stories and more next on Lifeline TV. Hello, I'm Dr. Bob Morale, and welcome to Lifeline TV. We're here at the 2005 Children's Miracle Network Telethon, where generous donations are coming in to support programs that help children in our community. Tonight, an ambitious goal has been set to raise $900,000. And if that happens, it would be an all-time telethon record. Even though the telethon is held here at Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital, the money raised goes to programs throughout our community. Tonight, we're gonna to take a look at some of these programs. We begin in a quiet oasis in the hills of Northern Salinas, now called Rancho Cielo. I look at it and I just see all the things we have to do, all, all the opportunities we have for young people. Uh, and I see this as a place where all the young people in the community have a safe environment to come to. Former Judge John Phillips had a vision for the former Natividad Boys Ranch that had laid dormant for so many years. He wanted to give it new life so that it, in turn, could be a place where at-risk teens could get another chance of success in their own lives. Our own feasibility study said it was virtually impossible. We could never do this. But Phillips persevered and called on the local building industry for help. And that's when the construction industry and the trades came in. Don Chapin, John Anderson, you tell those guys you can't do it, and they're the type of bullheaded guys that said, we're going to make it happen. The judge is very ambitious, and uh, he politely does not take no for an answer. With hundreds of thousands of dollars in donated materials and a league of volunteers, Rancho Cielo went from dream to reality. Okay, uh, anybody else want to Today, this is a thriving day program for 36 teenagers who are in the juvenile justice system. From 8 in the morning until 5 at night, they attend school here. Uh, what does your... They play here. And they are exposed to areas of life they have never seen before. I try to expose them to a little bit of everything. Two of our kids that were born and raised in Salinas uh, never seen the ocean before when we took them to Monterey. And, and, and so you see um, that their horizons aren't quite what us and our, uh, and our children are. I found out uh, by coming out here and working with uh, uh, the kids that they're no different than my kids at all. Uh, they just have less opportunities, uh, they just have less guidance, uh, and they just don't have the materials and people who are going to invest the time. We learn as much from them as they do from us uh, because you learn that these kids who have no self-esteem and no job skills, they want to work. They really do want to work, but they're intimidated. They don't know what to do. At the end of the day, though, you realize that they're not much different than your own kids, uh, except no one's really spent the time with them that, that should have, and no one's told them, you did this wrong. Or at the end of the day, hey, look at all the work we did. You, you, did, a, you did a good job today. Yeah. Get them, but just make sure we don't get any of the trees or we get any of the uh, flowers, okay, guys? Rancho Cielo made a big difference in my life. It's given me, a, it's given my confidence a big boost. Actually, I know that I could do the work that they, you know, that other students can do. I never thought I could pass California High School exit exam, and I did it. I aced it. They helped me out a lot. Schoolwork, everything. I'm about to graduate almost. You know, I'm real happy because of that. Because I didn't think I was going to graduate, so you know, I, I didn't really care about school because I knew I wasn't going to graduate. But here, they helped me with my grades and work and everything, you know, I'm really thankful for that. Oh my God, I want to graduate from this school and become a nurse and have my own house. This uh, will be where the culinary school will be. We have like a one-stop center here where everything that they need to put it back together again, that we got the education, they got probation, they got anger management, they got jobs, they got a psychiatric social worker on board. It's, it's kind of a unique uh, process, it's something that 
I have never seen in Monterey County in the 33 years I've been in here. I think this is a, this is as a DA and as a process as a as a judge. I think this is the most innovative program we've ever come up with, where we're trying to put the emphasis on the right kids to give them the skills to turn their life around. In the end, there'll be uh, an alumni of, of kids, I'm sure, uh, who will look back at this place and say, this is where things really changed in my life. Well, we've seen that it, uh, it can have a dramatic effect on their lives. Uh, they're up here and they're giving opportunities, they're giving encouragement, uh, you know, they're, they're challenged. I just think it's terrific that your group, Children's Miracle Network, has gotten involved and we just thank you from the bottom of our heart in believing in something like this. Children's Miracle Network is what probably promoted private-public relationships in the beginning. I mean, it's going on 20 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's been tremendous in the city of Salinas, but it's been a county-wide program that has provided so much opportunity for all of us. I consider Children's Miracle Network a, a kind of a partner with us here, and, and they, they've been they've been very very helpful. Children's Miracle Network helped us get here, so I really appreciate it. It helped us a lot. What a great program! Some very ambitious plans are in the works for the future of Rancho Cielo. Things like instituting a culinary training area and restaurant, building an amphitheater and athletic fields, just to name a few. And all of this will be available to all children in our community. Just like that. Kendra Howell is the director of Children's Miracle Network at Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital. In addition to planning and coordinating the telethon, Kendra oversees CMN fundraising efforts throughout the year which are all counted in the tally on this one night. Well, Kendra, how's the telethon going this year? Well, so far, so good. We've just had some great kids on and a lot of exciting people on the phone bank, and so I think we're off to a good start. Great. You have a pretty ambitious goal this year, don't you? We do. We're hoping to hit 900,000, and so far it looks really good. Yeah. I understand we're about to talk about a story about a very special young lady. Yeah, this is a girl named Haley Baxter. She's 12 years old. She had a bout with cancer. Uh, the best part of it, we just got the news that all her pathologies are clear, so it definitely has a happy ending, and it really brought the hospital together as a family, and you'll see why. Haley's always been thin. She's never been a heavy girl. She seemed like she was um, losing a little bit of weight. She had been complaining about a lot of headaches and jaw pain, and she had been like waking up in the middle of the night and saying my, her head was just hurting her so much. So we took her to see Dr. Caney, who's our pediatrician here in Salinas. When I weighed her in the office, she had lost about 10 pounds uh, compared with her weight a few months ago. So he sent us across the street uh, to Salinas Valley Memorial. And she had evidence of a very large mass extending from the pelvis up to her left kidney. Uh, the ultrasound also showed some hydronephrosis or blockage of the drainage passageways of both kidneys. And this tumor was the size of a volleyball. Um, not perfectly round, but pretty, pretty much the size of a, a, a volleyball kind of stretched out a little bit. The surgeon said it was so six good. hours of painstaking trying to lift the cancer off a large bowel. It was going through from her large, the deep in her large bowel to the back to her lower, lower um, intestine and, and rectum and lifted off the ureters. So it was about this size, but it was stretched out. So it's only, so it was only a little pooch. It wasn't like this big. Well, it was, but it was stretched out. And there was just a little protrusion of a tummy. Um, and I said, Haley, did, didn't you feel that? She said, no. She has to have chemo for the next five months, four to five months, for five days each month. We don't know how, hopefully she will feel better with the, the, the chemos that are to come. And when Haley got up to her room in pediatrics, there was a, a dog in a, a stuffed dog, <laughs> in a little cardboard um, dog house with a book. And I said, like, where did this come from? And the pediatric nurses said, oh, that's, that's um, a gift for her. And it's actually from Ch Children's Miracle Network. And um, this dog's name is Josh. And she read the book about this dog had surgery. So it was very sweet that um, that, that was waiting for her. He's uh, friendly and warm and extroverted and 
very strong, very courageous. It's been remarkable how she's handled the, not only the physical stress, but the tremendous emotional stress of going through this. Um, and her parents are also uh, pillars of strength and they've been uh, uh, unbelievably supportive of her needs and have been very supportive of the physicians who have, uh, who have helped uh, in Haley's care. Well, my mom and dad are both RNs, well, nurses at Memorial. I am personally as exhausted and I just can't get over it my, mentally, physically, because I'm trying to work her. I'm trying to work some long hours, just keep things going. And um, I just feel it. He's been trying to work as, enough for both of us because yeah. I've been staying home with Haley. Uh, nurses and other hospital personnel donated money. Um, a bunch of them even volunteered to have their heads shaved to be like Haley in a way to make her feel less different. Well, someone asked me if I will cut my hair for uh, $500 of nurses' money, and I said I'll do it for $5,000 of physicians' money. My wife Rachel, um, it was her idea to um, shave our heads. Then at first I had two people sign up, and um, at last glance I have 23 total sign up to uh, shave their head. They wanted to do something for Haley. So we knew that she would lose her hair from the chemo. I think it's really cool that they're just up to shaving their heads for me. It's a nice feeling to see all the nurses, doctors, even janitors um, come together and, and help the family. We got together at SAFS, as you know, and, and uh, we were able to see people from all different services at the hospital. We raised, uh, as of last check, uh, we raised about 5,300. The hospital has become like a family. When a member of that family is in need, we all come together to help that person. The hospital is a large family that uh, nurses and doctors and other staff at the hospital all care very much about each other and about each other's families. Sharing that time, sharing the joy, and helping, and that was just magnificent. Well, I'm delighted to know that she's able to celebrate her birthday and feel strong enough and healthy enough right now to, to hopefully enjoy it a great deal. It's just another instance, I think, where she's going to realize the love and, and care that everybody around her wants to demonstrate and tells us that she's ready to forge ahead to have, you know, not only this birthday, but a lot of birthdays in the future. We wish Haley and her family the very best and hope for a speedy recovery. We're here with Sam Downing, the president and CEO of Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital. Sam, we've been doing this for a long time. How's it going this year? Oh, it's going great. And uh, we're really pleased about the uh, overall progress that the, uh, the whole community has uh, helped support at the hospital yeah. and all of our outreach. This yeah. has done a lot for the community, hasn't all these years? Oh, it's outstanding. And every place you go, somebody will say, well, gosh, I had this service that was available that I didn't know about, and I was scared to go because I was embarrassed I didn't have any money, and then we were actually able to get the service because there was money available. Similar to uh, all of our kids who uh, get scholarships to different schools, you go, gosh, it made the impossible possible. I understand we have some funds uh, earmarked for the Level 3 uh, NICU also? Yes, we do, and that will bring us to even a higher level locally. The highest level you can have is a community hospital. And, of course, as you know, we're affiliated with Stanford, and uh, we've uh, enjoyed our partnership under Dr. Casting, and uh, we have uh, you know, numerous physicians that are on staff at Stanford now, and we're real excited about that. It's great. Well, another great year. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Bob. Thank Thank you. Good to see you. Here we go. Here's the number. Go ahead. Go! Go! 635,834. Yeah. We're here with Harry Wardwell, the president of the board of Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital. Harry, what does this telethon mean to the hospital? Well, it's tremendous. Uh, obviously, it uh, helps the youth of our community. It gives us the best uh, technology that money can buy for, uh, for our hospital. Uh, I think it's great public relations for the hospital. Um, you know, uh, there's only, I think, about 150 hospitals in the United States that uh, get represented by CMN, so we're very fortunate to, to be the one representing on the cent Central Coast. Right. You know, it really touches me to look at all the volunteers around here and how this is going to be. It's great the community support we're getting, isn't it? 
This hospital has tremendous support, lots of volunteers, literally thousands of hours every day, and uh, people that really care about their community, so I'm proud to be a part of it. Great. Thanks for spending time with us, Harry. All right, Bob. For two days prior to the telethon, the Children's Miracle Network radio partner, K-Wave 97FM, hosts the CMN Radiothon. Morning announcers Barry Brown and Karen Hamilton set up shop in the Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital cafeteria and broadcast live from 6 in the morning to 5 o'clock at night. What do you like about doing a radiothon and how is this different than doing your regular radio show? It's completely different. First of all, the hours are longer. We're here from 6 a.m. till 5 p.m. a couple days in a row. We're also working in front of an, an audience here in the cafeteria, so we've got a live audience that we, uh, we can feed off of, and, and we've got a great story to tell, and that's kind of, kind of fun. Now tell me some about some of these special moments. Anything that kind of stands out? Well, I went up to the third floor pediatrics unit uh, a few minutes ago and, and met uh, a little girl who's here. She's got a, a heart condition and has been hospitalized for about four or five days. She was as cute as the day is long, and yeah. we got to have a little fun, you know. Do you have a black eye? No. Do you have a stuffed toe? No. You know, and, and she was just great fun. It's, it's fun to meet the families and, and see the kids and see what's, what's being done here. Yeah. Uh, on behalf of Salinas Valley, we sure want to thank you for doing this. You're doing a great job, and we really appreciate it. My pleasure. Kathy, the Radiothon was a big success again this year, wasn't it? It was a wonderful success. Yeah. Why does K-Wave make such a big commitment to Children's Miracle Network? Well, part of the reason we realize there are a lot of families on the Central Coast that do not have the funds to take care of their children in, in a lot of cases that really need medical attention from dental care to health care to all different kinds of programs. And so there just isn't enough money sometimes for those things. And, and that's what touches us. Thank you very much. It's really nice to have you with us. Thank you. Another program supported by Children's Miracle Network is Salinas Valley Memorial's annual Asthma Day Camp. This year's Asthma Camp is celebrating its 20th year. We had a chance to catch up with some of the Asthma Camp graduates recently. They remember this camp as a turning point in their lives. Asthma Camp really, for one thing, showed me that other kids had it too, so I wasn't alone in it. And this wasn't just something that I had, and also really how to control it, um, both with medication and without medication, just through breathing techniques. So, you know, I didn't have to be afraid that if I didn't, if I forgot my medicine and didn't bring it to school, you know, that I could really kind of control it myself. Well, before asthma camp, I can probably admit that I was using my medicine way too much, my inhaler. Anytime I felt a little bit of wheezing coming on or started coughing, instantly I would use my inhaler. Whether I needed it or not, I thought I needed it mentally. Before asthma camp, I think I would panic a lot when I would have an asthma attack. Whereas nowadays and after asthma camp, just the relaxation, um, understanding what we needed to do as far as breathing, and just uh, being in control of asthma um, and not having asthma control me. So I think that's the big, biggest impact. We had a lot of relaxation times just to lay down and calm yourself down and I think for me that helped a lot when your asthma starts to come on just to know to just calm down before you do anything else. Don't get worked up and asthma camp really stressed on that and I think we learned a lot. It's an incredible experience where you can just learn so much about yourself and you know gain confidence and become, you almost leave a new person. They teach you all about the lungs and why you're getting an asthma attack and exactly what's happening within your lungs, why you can't breathe and you know ways to combat it. There's lots of swimmers, there's lots of cyclists that take at, that have to take medication. There's many Olympic athletes that have asthma. Attending asthma camp will teach you to have control of asthma and with learning how to control asthma at such a young age, I think that will also teach you self-control as you grow on later on in life. Asthma camp was a great experience, especially um, with the counselors, and just it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience that I had, and um, I definitely highly recommend it to other children with asthma, because I think it definitely helps build their self-confidence and their security, and um, definitely their awareness of exactly what asthma is and how they can control themselves. When you go to asthma camp, it, it almost becomes like a club. You know, like, you don't get to wear the shirt unless you're an asthmatic, you know, and uh, everybody's got their lungs on. And it's fun. It's fun. I remember having so much fun with, you know, the counselors and, and all the activities that they had planned for us. And it just, 
it's a great, great experience for, you know, for young kids, I'd say. Asthma camp definitely teaches you to have fun and takes you places that you might be scared to do um, on your own. If you know you have asthma, you definitely need to go to asthma camp. I mean, it's, it's a fun experience for one thing. You have a lot of fun, but you do learn. And depending on what, you know, they go to it for, they'll, they'll pick that up. If they want to learn just the science behind your bronchioles getting inflamed, or if they want to learn how to control it, or what they can do with asthma, there's a lot of avenues to go through. I like to think that asthma camps give them the confidence to go out and do it. And, uh, it's an incredible experience and it's a lot of fun. A lot of people care a lot about it and they do everything they can to make it the best that it can be. Asthma camp was probably one of the things I looked forward to during the summers. Uh, we, would, we would swim, we would interact with people and the games and the activities were just all inclusive. And I think the dunk booth at the end of the week was probably one of the highlights of the asthma camp experience. The Salinas Valley Memorial Board of Directors dedicated the Asthma Day Camp in honor of one of its founders, Dr. Mark Velkoff. The camp is now officially named the Mark Velkoff MD Asthma Day Camp. All right, three, two, one, go! Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, everything stays local. 100% of it stays local. And so, Aaron, you've got to bend the knees just a little bit more. more. Thank a you. More? Okay. Just work with us. Okay. okay? Um, with aren't these gals great? So, Dan, how's the telethon going this year? Well, I tell you what, with so many volunteers and, and so many people here at Salinas Valley Memorial get involved in this thing. It's such a level. It's very exciting. And, and of course, the donations are pouring in, so we're very happy. Great. Now, how many is this for you? What year is this, this for you? This is the seventh year for KSPW and the Children's Miracle Network, and we're thrilled to be, be a part of it. I understand this year is kind of special for you. Your son was just born. Yeah, it was just a couple of weeks ago he was born. And, you know, it's funny because we've been here for so many years, and, and there he was. And, and when he came out, you know they do the APGAR score, right? And and they they grade the condition of the child after a minute, and then so on and so forth. And and when he was born, there was nothing, and we waited for a minute, and they gave him a score after that first minute of one, which from what I understand is like one better than dead. And so we were very frightened for that moment. You know, just for that moment, you're thinking as the seconds wow. tick by, yeah. and you think about all the time that you've spent talking with the, with the professionals who work at Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital. And knowing that that NICU was 15, 20 feet away from where we were at that moment, and that a neonatologist was on the way, I can't tell you how comforting that was to me and, and Katie, and, and it was great. And thank goodness, by the time the neonatologist got there, we were good. So it, it was just fine. They got there in a big hurry, but he had turned around just like that, and he went from a one to a nine right away. But, right. but you know, with that happening to us, and just having that few seconds make you realize how vital this is to this community, this is, this is very important to us this okay. year. Well, I saw him yesterday, and he looks really great, Dan. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Thanks for spending the time All with right. us. All right. We want to raise money for kids on the Central Coast in the Children's Miracle Network Telethon. I understand Dan was a real problem up here that night. Is, can you confirm that? Well, he's, he's, uh, he's always a challenge, you know? <laughs> but he, he, his heart's in the right place. And he just expects the best. Dan? Dennis, he you, says you, you were okay. You know, you know <laughs> darn good and well that I was nothing but thrilled with, with them. And, and, and Sam knows that too, because I, I, I went out there and, and, and thanked him personally. Oh, you did? Yes, you, you bet we did. Okay, uh, Sam, did you give Dan a break on the bill? Oh, no, 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 no. We don't go to there. <laughs> Well, in that, in that case, I do have a few issues that I could talk about. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, and you know what? The staff was so fantastic, Dennis. I, and, and we're going to come up there in a little bit. Owen should be here in a few minutes. You guys but have so much enthusiasm out there. I mean, it must be a little bit of fun coming out here, isn't it? It's fun, and it's a great cause. If you're coming out for a great cause, it makes everything easier. You know, I mean, you're helping kids. Who, you know, it's, 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 it's so easy to get behind. So, and you mean, I was just talking with, you know, kids that were riding and doing the riding therapy, and they're so excited. So that's infectious, and that helps us start to get excited, too. Well, you guys do a, such a great job for the hospital. We really want to thank you, and uh, keep, keep coming back. It's our pleasure. We'll keep coming back. Are you ready for the last piece? Here it goes. Dun, 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 dun. Irene from Salinas, thank you. $500. All right. Wow.
Wow. Is that great? <laughs> and this is something we all look forward no. to. It starts off our summer, and it's a way for us to connect to the community and the community to connect back with the hospital. Because even though people may live in Salinas, they may live in Marina, they may live in Watsonville or Gilroy, there are times when it comes to specialized care that only Salinas Valley Memorial offers. It becomes a vital asset to the entire Central Coast, not just Salinas proper. And when we can open people's eyes up to that and let them know how important it is for the children, what we're doing with the Children's Miracle Network, they suddenly come to realize that you know, there's, there's a lot to be said for pitching in and getting the kind of gear so that we don't have to fly kids up to the Bay Area and all that for care. And I think that's really important. And that we can help them with that, and they help us by supporting it. It's a great thing. They call 1-877-KSBW-TV-1. 1-877-572-9881. Remember, we're here for the kids tonight. All the yes, he and his wife, Kate, had baby Owen. There's baby Owen. And we're going to go up and meet baby Owen in just a minute. That is his, his TV debut. Three weeks old, Owen Michael Green. Here we are in the nursery, and uh, you know what? We've had a lot of people talk, call and talk and ask us about Owen, but, but how about Kate? She hasn't been on TV for a while. We've had a lot of people concerned about you. You're fine. I'm doing great, Dennis. I'm doing great, and he's just... He's just fantastic. And these know. people behind you, pretty special people. Oh, so special. All of these people here at SVMH were just so incredible. And this is like, it's like coming home. We spent so so long here and all of these, all of these gals helped us through every step of the way. It was just incredible. We owe so much to them, so much gratitude. Dennis, you've been doing this telethon for a long time. How's it going this year? It looks great so far. Actually, I just arrived. I'm the, I'm the late shift. You know, you save the prime talent for prime time. That's what I'm looking forward to. Hope we can uh, break some records this year, make more money than ever. Good. What, what does a telethon mean to you? Well, it's a chance to go out into the community and do something other than just do the sports scores and highlights for me. It's uh, a chance to actually meet people that you haven't seen in a while and then also go on the air and uh, appeal to people that uh, if they could just give a few bucks for a very good uh, cause. and. Uh, we have no problem doing that. In fact, I kind of enjoy it. Great. Well, you guys are doing a great job. Thanks for spending some time with us. That's it? That's it, buddy. This, this was the last hour. I want yeah, to invite uh, our president and general manager, Joseph W. Heston, out here. Joe, you're the master of all the numbers. Last year was what? Last year was, oh, you're going to do 800. Hold on. He's got it in his wallet. He's keep, I'm serious. <laughs> all year he long. He keeps it in his wallet. $849,716. Sam Downing is here. He's also been looking in Joe's wallet as well. <laughs> he's, he's, Sam he's found the credit card too. and pressed it while Joe was like in there getting something to eat. Okay. All right, so last year was how much? Eight, 840, why did you do this twice? Come on, here we go. 800, 849,716. Let's get to this year's now, we're running out All right, of time. Go, let's go for it. Dan, Aaron, Jim, what do you oh, think? I, 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 I think? Count them down. Three. Yeah. Let's One, go. I can't stand the tension. There we go. Dollars. There we go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Man alive. There we go. That is fantastic. We did it. Thank you. That is just fantastic. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic. Cannot believe it. Fantastic. Thank you, buddy. That is fantastic. Your folks are the rest.